to future engineers welcome for our uh, new discussion for this uh, this one uh, uh tonight we'll be talking about our next topic on the determination of the area from the application of our definite integral no, of the regions bounded by the curve right now we'll be talking about the determination of the areas of a region bounded between curves Okay, so this is also an application of the definite integrals, but last time we tried to solve for the areas bounded between curves. Right now, we'll be dealing on how to get the areas of regions bounded between curves. So let's start our discussion. So uh, one of the many applications of the definite integral is the determination of the area bounded by a curve. So, usana siya sa to ang kano application sa definite integral. Different determination of the area bounded by a curve. Another important application is its use in what? In finding the volume of a three-dimensional solid. We call this a solid of revolution. So, last time, uh, one application of the definite integral is determination of the area bounded by a curve. Right now, we'll be dealing with uh, finding the volume of a three-dimensional solid. Uh, we call it our solid of revolution. So why we call this our solid of revolution? So here, here we have a region in the plane revolving around a line. So say, in a plane, say we have our coordinate system here. And then, uh, there is a region of the plane. So let's say we have a curve. Like this. And then I regions of plane revolve about the line. And then, so let's say this region of the plane, of our plane, is revolved along the y axis so what will happen uh, what will happen during the revolution of this uh, area or this specific region this will form a volume no this will form a three dimensional object or three dimensional solid we call that our solid of revolution. So solid of revolution because this is a solid form by allowing this region in the plane to revolve along the specific axis, let's say along a y, along the y axis or along the x axis. And the line of revolution is we call the axis of revolution. So for this uh, example here, since we have a region here, we uh, revolve it along the y-axis, a 360 degrees revolution, uh, which it form a three-dimensional solid. So our uh, axis of revolution for this example is the y-axis, our axis of revolution. And the solid we form, or the three-dimensional solid we form, we call that our solid of revolution. So we have a sample here, you know, so actually if you can see here, uh, ob the objects here are all most likely are in symmetry. So uh, if you notice, we have our axis of revolution here. Same also this one. So Monisha, uh, if well, it will have uh, ob the region bounded, uh, in the plane, if we revolve it along an axis, it will result, result to a three-dimensional solid. So that three-dimensional solid may form a, uh, like this one, this is pure solid. Or maybe like this one, like a cone. Or it has hollow. Or maybe like this one also, no? Hello, po ng sulod. So, wow. 
uh, in determining the volume of this one, so listen tayo if we are going to apply those basic uh, volumes that we already know in our previous years. So this one, we can apply the definite integral, the concept of the, the definite integral in finding its volume. Okay. So there are three ways in which we can identify the volume of a solid of revolution. The first one, you have the de disk method. The second one, we have also have what we call the washer method. And the third one, we have the shell or the cylindrical method. Okay, so uh, for, let's discuss first the first one. What is this disk uh, method? So let's say, you know, we have here our axis of revolution. And then if we rotate that along this axis, of course, this rectangular this uh, what we call we call this our representative rectangle. Or a differential element. If we allow this representative rectangle to revolve along this axis, obviously it will form this cylinder or this specific disk. Now sound na to. Let's say the height of this rectangle is the R, or since uh, it already formed a circular or a cylindrical one. Let's say this is the radius of the of the disk, and then the width or the thickness of this uh, representative rect rectangle is represented by W. So saan man ato pagkua si volume ani? By looking at this, we know that the volume is just pi r squared times the thickness w. Yan na lang. Now, how about if we have a curve? So, sa mga na to, ano? No, uh, what we do with that is that, di ba, we, we try to put as many rectangular strips Diba in the area method, in its uh, basic form, it's like putting uh, these rectangular strips throughout the region. Now, same thing also happens with the determination of the volume of the solid of revolution. Uh, just that in this one, we allow them to rotate along the, uh, let's say here, for this example, we allow this to rotate. In the x axis. So, our axis of revolution for this one is the x axis. So, what will happen uh, if the Gantag, if we have many vertical strips or like representative rectangle? Uh, so, Mohamed is that we will have a series of this that will form here. So on and so forth. So uh, from that one, from that series of of the of these strips or this this representative this here, we can say that the total volume is just the what the summation of all volume form volume of the representative this. So take note that the thickness of this disk is represented by our delta x. Now we apply the integral integration with this one. We can say then that the volume of our cylinder or the volume of the solid of revolution here is just equal to pi the integral of what? R of x squared times the thickness, our thickness is dx. From what? From, from A to B. So please uh, don't be confused here. R of x is just the, the function of this curve with respect to x. So dapat uh, isolated ang talent x and then we'll use that to integrate 
for this one. And our A to B is from A to B, the limits of our solid of revolution. How about if nakatindog, how about if the solid of revolution is revolving along the, let's say the y-axis. So this one, this is for the horizontal. If it's uh, along the y-axis, uh, simply lang v is equal to y times r of y squared dy from c to d. c to d are just the limits along the y-axis sa to ang solid of revolution. So, ano lang. So, that is just the basic, no? Basic volume of this disk is just this one, pi r squared, w. The r, w here, the width or the thickness of the rectangle is the delta x. So to determine uh, the volume of a solid of revolution revolved along the x-axis, that is just pi r squared. Pi r squared then, the thickness, dx. So one is, it is represented by this formula. If our uh, solid of revolution is revolved along the y-axis, then this will be our formula. Same concept also applies. We will have that the volume, so the volume is just equal to pi r squared times the thickness. So it's, uh, it looks like this one, no? For, uh, in the first one, we have a curve. And then we have our representative rectangle with, uh, with its width or thickness in delta x. Our upper limit, our lower limit rather, is the a. Upper limit is the b. Now to determine the volume of the, uh, represented by this curve, so diba, we try to have a representative disk. So to get the volume, approximate volume of this whole curve or whole solid that is formed by rotating this specific region along the x-axis, you need to provide a series of uh, a number or a series or a number of this. But again, uh, we just apply the concept of integration for that one. That's why we arrive with the pi r squared x, pi r squared dx from a to b. This is for the horizontal and for the vertical pi r of y squared dx dy rather from c to d so don't be confused with that one just think of the formula of the this then you'll you'll got it Now, the second method in determining uh, the volume of a revolution, we have here the washer method. Actually, the washer method is just the extended version of the depth disk method. The disk method can be extended to cover solids of revolution with holes. So, for the disk method that is pure solid, uh, this one we have a, let's say we have a hole in the center. By replacing the representative disk with a representative washer. So a washer, no, uh, that, uh, the washer is this one. This is our washer. It has a hole in the center. So the concept only uh, with this one is that we have a disk. Let's say we have a larger disk. We have uh, we will have our larger disk rotated along this axis, and then you're just going to subtract the whole, the whole part, the smaller this if the larger this the radius of the larger this is represented by r capital r and the radius of the smaller this is represented by smaller r then actually same thing apply you know, here we'll have pi r squared let's say uh, uh times the thickness w minus here we have the pi the small letter r 
R squared is the thickness W. Now for our representative uh, rectangle, the width or the thickness is just equal to delta X. So here, uh, the volume of that one, of that washer, is just equal to, if uh, we place the constant outside, we'll have pi. And then applying the concept of the integration, we will have integral of r of x squared minus r of x, the small, small r of x squared dx from a to b. Again, this is for horizontal axis, horizontal axis of revolution. For the vertical one, we have the volume is equal to pi, integral of r of y squared minus r of y squared dy from c to b. So, what is the concept of this washer method? It's like just the disk method with the larger disk minus the smaller disk. So, like for this one, oh, always we have the, this is just equal to, the volume is just equal to the V is equal to pi integral of, we have the outer radius, square of the outer radius. Minus square of the inner radius. This is just the basic concept of the washer method. Dx from A to B. So from the sample here, let's say the, the axis of revolution is along the x-axis man, along this one. Uh, this region here will form a solid of revolution like this one, and it has a hole. So we will be using the washer method in determining the volume of the solid part of this revolution. So the uh, the line here is our out outer radius. The function here out on that line is our outer radius. The function represented by this curve will be our inner radius. Now the third method in determining the volume of uh, Solid of revolution, we have what we call the shell method or the cylindrical method. So for this one, we will be using also a representative element. But the thing is, uh, the rotation with this one is will be for, will form a cylinder. So the in the axis in the this method. Let's say we have a vertical strip and then if we rotate that along this axis, we will form a this. See also with the concept with the washer method. Let's say we have uh, this strip and then if we rotate that uh, along the x axis, we will have a washer that is formed. Now with the cylindrical uh, or the shell method, what happens here is that let's say uh, we rotate the region bounded by the curve along the x axis. Our uh, representative rectangle in that one it seems lying no more. And then we we'll rotate that along the x axis. Then we can see that there is a cylinder cylinder form in rotating that one. So for this one, note the width or the thickness of the strip is dx, and then the height is just the radius or dr. For this one, you have here young thickness is just the dy, and then you see, this one is our H. Our dy here is the W. No? This is for the along the x axis rotation of the uh, of this specific uh, strip. And then let's say, 
Kani ding tunga. So thickness that is our P that is the average radius. No, like it, it was shown here. We have a thickness W here. And then on the center of that, to the center of the axis of revolution, we have our P, that is our average radius. So in the cylinder also, we have an outer radius and the inner radius. So sam na nato pa ang volume ani. Of course, by our knowledge from our simple math, we know that the volume, so the volume of the solid is just equal to the volume of cylinder, that is the total volume of the cylinder, minus the volume of the hole. So what is the volume of this cylinder? The volume of the cylinder is equal to pi r squared h lang. So that is pi times what is our radius? Our radius is that is from to the, from the center or from the axis of revolution. Paingon dili sa pinaka ibabaw. That is the average radius plus the thickness over 2. Okay, average radius is naman siya sa tunga plus gidugang siya 1 half of the thickness. That, that's why we have the W over 2, that is our radius squared times the height h. Minus on this other side, we also have our pi times the radius of the inner circle. This one. The radius of the inner circle is just the average radius minus W over 2. Then we square that one times the height also, h. So we simplify that one. Uh, we can isolate the pi and the h because these are common. We can factor that out. So then we will have pi h times p plus width over 2 squared minus the average radius minus half of the thickness of our representative rectangle. Then we will have pi times h integral of p squared. We just distribute that one plus P omega, the average radius times the thickness, plus W squared over 4, minus P squared, plus PW, minus W squared over 4. So looking at that one, the P squared cancels out, and also the W squared over 4 cancels out, and then we were already... We are only remain with the uh, P times W. Then we will have 2 pi P H W. So, it na siya kwa, no? 2 pi R squared. Uh, the, con the concept is just the 2 pi R squared H. It's like the circumference. So, ang naitabo is that, is that in the cylinder, we just get the circumference that is 2 pi r. So, amura siya gihimo na itong ingani. That is the 2 pi r. Then, to get the area, we will have the h. And to get the volume, we will multiply it with the thickness. Thickness na w. So this is the volume of the cylinder. So again, no, the volume of the cylinder is equal to 2 pi phw. The p here is represented by the, that is the average ra uh, radius again. The h is the length or the height. And the W is the thickness. Now, if we transform this into a, an integral, uh, that we'll be using the x or the dy in that one. So, for instance, here we have the 
delta y and then the delta x. So the volume of the solid form using the shell method, if the uh, region is rotated along the horizontal axis or the x-axis, that is just equal to 2 pi integral of what? Integral of P of y, H of y, dy from C to D. So for this one, the rotation is along the x, but since the uh, this is our vertical strip, up to the lower and upper limit is from C to D because these strips will move from here, from this uh, from C to D. So uh, this uh, the P of Y here is just the radius, the average radius. The H of Y is just the length of our uh, rectangular or representative rectangle and the dy is just the thickness of the shell. Now the volume of our of this one, the second one, if uh, the representative rectangle is rotated or revolved along the vertical axis that is just equal to 2 pi integral of p of x times h of x dx from A to B. So if you notice then you know so, so this uh, this method uh, let's just re rewrite that so V is equal to two pi integral of P of x h of x dx from A to B. So we have uh, three methods. We have the disc. We also have the washer. And we have the shell method. So, so this method, the volume if rotated along the x-axis, that is just equal to pi r of x squared dx. So washer, same thing. Same with the uh, disc, that is pi times R of x, the, re the outer radius minus the inner radius, dx. Uh, so this point, if rotated along the y, the uh, x, um, the x is the axis of revolution. Here, y is our axis of revolution. Uh, the volume here for the disk, that is uh, pi times the integral of the radius or r y squared, r of y squared dy from c to d. For the this same thing also, pi times the integral of the outer radius minus the square of the outer radius minus the square of the inner radius dy from c to d. In the shell method, medyo opposite na siya no, medyo nilahi ilang uh, use. We have here the 2 pi times the integral of the average radius along the y or p of y then h of y dy from c to d and if the axis of revolution is towards along the y axis then you can obtain our volume for the shell method as 2 pi times the integral of p of x h of x dx from a to b